Hi there, today I'm going to be talking about the Hewn Hone axe carving jig. It's a specialised jig for grinding the flat bevels that are needed on a carving axe and it runs on the Robert Sorby Pro Edge machine. Uh, firstly though, a little bit of background about the jig. For a few years now I've been teaching forging carving axes and I wanted my students to be able to complete the whole axe, so not just forge it but also grind the bevels. Uh, when they forge an axe it's actually got this very fat edge no bevels at all, so there's quite a lot of steel to remove, which is possible on the Pro Edge, uh, but most people who will be grinding an axe uh, on this jig, realistically they're going to be using an axe which has already got some sort of bevel, so it would be a lot quicker to do than these ones. Uh, but students have managed uh, to grind their own axes on all my courses with this jig. They've asked me to do production, and this is where we've, we've ended up. So what we're going to do is take a close look at the Pro Edge, because there's a few little points that we need to uh, address before we actually get started. Right, the uh, Sorby Pro Edge is a really competent machine and I will be doing a video describing it uh, further. But there are a couple of issues which uh, should be addressed before we start using the axe jig. The first one is that on some machines you'll find that there's a little bit of play between the belt and the metal platen which uh, backs it. Um, and in some ways that's a good thing because it reduces the wear on the platen, reduces drag and heating up. Um, but for, in this instance, it's good to take that play away. You can see on this, there's a fraction of movement on the, on the belt is just sitting slightly off the platen. And when it starts running, it can actually um, float off a little bit more. So what we want to do is pull the platen forward. Um, this is the platen itself which I've, I've taken one off. And what you need to do is, it's only mounted on these two holes here, is to, using a, a round file, just file the holes back a bit this way, so that the belt, so that the platen can move forward and make contact with the belt. I've actually already filed these holes a bit longer than this one, so I'll show you how it moves. So if I just loosen this slightly, I don't even have to take it off, just loosen and then I can pull this forward and do it up again. Do up the guard. And see that I've taken the play out, there's full contact. You don't want to press it forwards more than you need to, but uh, that will just help. So the reason why that's important is because when you're grinding, uh, if you're pushing the axe uh, bevel against the belt, so if my hand's the belt, if it's got a firm backing, if it's against the platen, when you press in, you can grind quite aggressively and the belt will just move past it and grind a flat bevel. If, however, the belt isn't backed and is floating off the platen slightly, what will happen is that when you press in, the belt will push in slightly and bend round and as it wants, as the belt's coming down, it will round the bevel. And if you're very unlucky, it may even cut into the belt and cut through it, uh, which is obviously something you want to avoid. So taking out this play uh, is the uh, most important thing to do. Okay, so the next issue with the Pro Edge is to do with the geometry of the grinding jig. So I'll fit that and explain a bit how it works and then it should become more apparent. So the... Uh, the jig just slots on here. You can see there's a little bolt to do up here and it wants to be set up with this divot roughly in the centre of the belt. And don't do anything up too tightly. I've already put an axe in the other in the clip. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about setting this up later. Um, so this is how the axe jig works and the angle is set for you. You can turn it over, the angle's set. However, the thickness of the belt will alter the angle that the, uh, that, that the bevel is ground at. So it's very important when you're selecting belts that you're selecting belts which match as closely as possible uh, in thickness, which does make belt selection a bit more difficult. So to that end, I'm not gonna be talking about which belts I'm using. I'll talk about the coarse belt, a fine belt, and then a finishing belt. And later on, 
we will have a list of the, right, the best belts to use because we're trying to sort out the, the best progression of belts at the moment. Uh, but we've, we've found some which will work and we will, we'll, they'll be in the description, but rather than talk about a belt which I'm not gonna use later, we'll just talk about uh, them in abstract. So we're starting on the course belt. I'll be doing the demonstration today with a Rhineland pattern head. This is a very common head. You'll see it all over the place. Uh, this was actually, it's a Chinese axe. I bought it off eBay, uh, came for £6.95 delivered with a handle, which I've taken off. But um, you'll see old ones of these um, and they're likely to be better quality than this. But this was an easy one to come by and uh, it's fine for the demonstration. So first thing we're gonna do is put the jig on, which just does up like this. Uh, and then we locate the divot here. And this is really how the jig works. It sets set the angle and that's what we're looking for. However, one thing to check for is if I just make a mark here and then a mark here. We want to check that these are the same height, so we're grinding uh, an even angle because the further up it is here, the shallower the angle is, further down the more uh, obtuse it is. So we want that. And there's not much in it, but this one's slightly higher. So to bring this one down, so this is the lower one, to bring the lower one up a bit, we need to move the pivot away from the, uh, away from the low point, so I'll move it over. What's happening is we've got an arc that the axe edge is forming, and then there's the arc from the pivot, and we're trying to make them line up as accurately as possible. So. <laughs> there we go. Let's have another go. Let me put this one here. Yeah, they seem to line up pretty nicely, so that's good to go. Next thing to do is to check that the uh, that the jig is running down the centre of the eye, and it's over this way slightly. So I'll just uh, make a slight adjustment. Do it up again. That looks good. Don't want to do it up too tightly with a spanner. Just nip it up. If you're off to one side, it's not going to give a symmetrical grind, and we're just looking to do flat symmetrical grind. So now we're on to grinding. Um, what I tend to do is I'll put my fingers in the eye of the axe and then use my thumbs to guide. I'm not pressing down hard. This is a fresh belt. So it'll cut really cleanly. It doesn't need a lot of pressure, but I need, do need to guide and put a bit more pressure on here to make the corners engage. And that's what, don't want to put your fingers behind because they're going to get caught uh, and then turn it over. Do the other side. I always start in the middle and then work to a corner. And then I want, don't want to bring the corner much past the center, oh, sorry, not much past the edge. Then back to the center, another corner, don't go much past the edge. The point being that if you start in the center, it will naturally tend to sit flat. If you start in the corner, it's going to, um, there's a chance of it digging in and cutting through the belt. So we uh, don't want to start in the corner, start in the middle. So I'm going to grind this now. Okay, a couple of things there. Firstly, it ground very nicely. It's a fresh belt, as I say, you can see the flat established very quickly. Uh, I should have said that if you're grinding, you should be wearing safety glasses and a dust mask. However, we will uh, measure this bevel. One thing that happens is that 
there's no measurement or there's no graduation I can put on this on the jig to tell you what the angle is because it depends it's just simple geometry it depends on the length of the axe so what I use is a digital angle finder and I can just push this up once you've set some sort of bevel push it up and it will tend to just sit at the point that the bevel uh, the practice I mean you can look at it as well but it'll just naturally stop at the point and I'm at about 35 there, which is a bit extreme, so I'm going to put it a little bit, put it back a little bit, which means if I push it forward, I'll get a shallower angle. So I've just adjusted like that, and that should be fine because I'm looking between 33 and 35. So I'm going to carry on now and carry on with the grinding. I just, what I'm looking to, to do is make sure I've hit the edge and I'll feel a burr up here, and I'll try and show you that. So my last grind was on this side, so if I've hit the edge, the burr will be hanging over this way, so I should be able to feel it. Uh, where, so you can't see it, I'm sure, but I can feel burr here and there, but not in the middle, so I need to do a little bit more. So I'll carry on until I've hit burr, or hit the edge and got burr all the way along. Um, and then I'm just looking to balance the bevel so it looks nice and even, so I do a little bit more work in this corner and that corner, a bit more in the middle. And it's, it can be that quick. So as grinding this side, I can feel burr all the way along here. So I know I've hit the edge. The bevel is nice and even, and it's nice and even this side. So uh, that's it for this grit. And this, this was the coarse grit. This was obviously sort of the roughing grit on it, but we've set the bevel angle now. Right. Okay, so I've now put on a finer belt and we're going to refine the scratch pattern. It's very difficult to see when you've got through the scratches left by the coarser belt. So what I do, I don't have to paint the whole bevel, but I just put a, a line along here. And I'll do a quick grind. And if I've removed all the pen, I know I've gone all the way to the edge or the corners, because it's easy to miss the corners. Yeah. So, yeah, I was trying to actually miss a corner to show that how easy it is to do, but I didn't. One thing with these coarser belts is that they're throwing sparks. So you can use the sparks to tell you where you're actually hitting with the edge. So, and practice at that is really useful to know where you are because with the finer belts later on, you won't see the sparks. So you're not getting this guide. And to be safe, I'll do it again. I'll work through it again. There we go, you can see that I just missed that corner, which is why we painted up. However, I always teach to do it three times, so we'll get there in the end.
Okay. Okay, so I put on a finer belt, so the same process, we mark it up and we run through the scratches. Uh, this is pretty much my view of sharpening, is that you set the bevels accurately with a coarse belt and then all you really need to do is remove scratches after that. you do not not doing any shaping, so that was set with the first, first belt. Um, I've run through it once, but I'm not going to make you watch it three times. Okay, so we're refining the finish. You can see it's more difficult to do at this stage because I'm not getting the, the tell from the sparks to telling me exactly where I'm. And also, to be honest, I'm trying to do it from the side because if I'm in front of it, it's a lot easier, but you can't see what I'm doing. So, uh, so yeah, I, it's not as easy as it could be. Uh, I, I'll do this another few times. Another point to remember is that when you get to the finer belts, the potential to overheat is higher, so you need to um, use less pressure. You don't really need to press with any of these, um, but you certainly, with the finer belts, you're really just letting the, the belt, letting the axe just rest against the belt. You're guiding it, but you're not really, you don't want to press. And if you're going to overheat it anywhere, it's bound to be on a corner because in the middle the heat can run away in either direction from the corner. It can only run one way, so it's much more likely to overheat. So again, don't linger on the corners and don't roll into the corner like this or else it will make the edge, the corner will drop away. So I'll do a couple more grinds on that, but I won't make you watch because it's going to look exactly like the last few I did. Okay, so I'm going to do the final grind on the final belt. I've actually been through it twice. This is the, the last one. Right, so that is as far as we can get with grinding. It's sharp now, but there's a little bit I'll do with stropping uh, to get the final edge on. But you can see that's a very flat, even bevel, and the angle will be consistent. Right then, so we've got the axe ground. We just need to do a final strop because there will be a little bit of burr on here. So I've got some grey compound, which I'll rub on here and then I'm just going to strop along here to take any burr off. You can see a lot of black that it's uh, it cuts very quickly. And then just to, it isn't, it is just a cheap axe, but even so, we'll have another go. White compound, do the same again. Uh, 
and it probably would be beneficial to spend a bit longer on it than this but we'll see how it cuts so yeah and end grain and it's cutting nicely across end grain so yeah i'm quite happy that that sharpened well Okay, so we've seen how to grind a smaller axe, and I'm going to show you how you can actually grind a larger axe. This is right on the limit, but you can grind an axe this big with the jig. So I'll set this up for you now. So that's the first stage, is to turn this top bar round. Second stage is to undo this nut bolt and turn it over. Oop. Okay, and so putting this below gives you enough clearance that you won't run off the top of the uh, platen. Put this in. And you can see now that you'll be able to grind here. So you could grind the bevel without running off the top of the platen. So it is possible. It's a bit more difficult to, to do the adjustments, but that's, that, that is an option. Now, another thing which is going to come up, I'm sure, is that people are going to want to grind an axe with the handle on. And yes. We, we, will, we have addressed that. There is a jig which will, um, which will address that, which will be out very soon. But for the moment, I was going to keep it simple because it's actually a lot easier to grind an axe which the handle is off. Because once you start grinding with the handle, you can have trouble with the handle um, hitting the switch area, which is hard to avoid in some shapes. Uh, plus also, you tend to, people will tend to grab the handle and you've got too much leverage. So... You still have to hold it um, here. I mean, the handle uh, gets away of a balance, so it's actually easier to grind without handle, which is why with the axes, which I do, I always leave a long wedge. I can put this in a vise, pop the wedge out, and then the head comes off and I can grind it. So if you are refurbishing an axe, I'd recommend doing this method. Uh, but if you've got an axe which has got a metal wedge banged in it, um, then it's going to be very difficult to get the handle out. Uh, there's a jig coming out which is obviously compatible with this which will allow you to grind an axe with the handle on so that will be coming soon. Okay so this brings us to the end of the video. Uh, we start with an axe with a, a poorly defined rounded bevel and we've ended up with a nice crisp clean bevel which is uh, what the jig will do. So uh, thanks for watching.